Hello and welcome back. Today is the christening of the new trailer, the first trip out to the wood yard to pick up wood. And we're going to skip right through it here. I got it all loaded up. It looks great, doesn't it? It's just loaded to the gills. I could maybe put another piece or two in there. And I'm about ready to start driving. However, <laughs> things don't go according to plan. There's a small problem that comes up here and I'm hoping to remedy it in this video in a little bit. I took off driving, my little tires were smoking. Okay, they weren't really smoking. I only drove about 30 feet, but they were definitely rubbing on the fender. I'm not gonna lift this up, but there's wood in there. There's all kinds of neat stuff at the wood yard. What do y'all think about this piece of far wood? Might be like a poison ivy vine or something. It's not poison ivy, look at the leaves. Pretty cool. I don't know what kind of wood this is. I'm gonna try to find out, but it is beautiful. I just split, I ripped that in half with a chainsaw, but when you split it, it has this whole rainbow of pink and it goes from whatever brown to peach to pink. It's really pretty wood. And I'm not sure what it is. I mean, that's the bark. And there's some better examples of the bark I have at home. Like that piece. I don't know what that puppy is. I'm gonna have to ask somebody and find out, but I got a few logs of it. And this is the maiden voyage, the christening, if you will of the new trailer and it holds some wood all right everybody i'm a little bit disappointed here but the first time out christening of this new trailer didn't go very well you saw the shots of how loaded i had the trailer and i was thinking about putting larger sides on it and loading it up even more and the gentleman that I bought it from told me that I have no problems hauling firewood, that it can handle the load, that he knows how much wood weighs, and he, he cuts firewood and has a stove and everything. And maybe he just didn't load it up this, this far or ever get around to using it. But anyways, I took off driving and immediately I heard some really weird noises, so I stopped. I got about 30 feet, and what was happening is the tires were rubbing on the top of the fender wells. There's only about two inches of space in between the top of the tire and the metal fender well that covers the tires. So um, when that thing squatted down, it was just sitting on the top of the tires and the tires are rubbing on the fender, okay? Well, I think I've, I've made a couple phone calls, talked to a couple people, and this was my initial reaction too, was just, I'm just gonna cut the fenders off. So here we go, that's what I'm gonna do. We're cutting the fenders off this thing, and then I'm gonna reload it and see how far it squats down when I get a load of wood in it, and I'll just load it up to where it, it basically gives me an inch or two of cushion above the axle, so if I hit a bump, it won't just be pounding on the axle and bend the axle, so. Here we go. The first thing I did was jack the trailer up and put a jack stand underneath it and pull the tire off so I could get to the welds. I'm not playing the audio that goes with this because I'm at high speed and the air compressor is running and it just sounds really annoying. So that's what the damn weld is. Uh, that's free. A little stain on there. As I was saying, that metal fender will provide some protection from all the spark spraying and everything. But this is how you want to attack that job uh, 100%. The welds are on the inside of the wheel well, uh, mud flap, tire thing, whatever you want to call it. I keep calling it a fender or but it's a wheel well or whatever. Anyways. I was going to just attack it and start cutting from the outside and cut that thing off and one way or the other, one way or the other get in there and get to the welds. Well, 
it's really a tight area. Like I said, there was only like two inches anyways in between the top of the tire. And I really didn't want to slip or accidentally start cutting into my tire with that grinder. That would not be a good situation. And it's just a really tight space anyways. And there's wood behind it that I didn't want to hit either. And then I pulled the tire off. It only takes a minute or two to pull the tire off. Well, when you look in, the welds are right there on the inside. So uh, that's how they welded this thing on. I was kind of wondering how they, how they got it all together. Well, they, they welded it before the tires were on. So if you ever have to do this, pull the tire off and you can get to the welds really easy. The welds are breaking. Look, I'm playing a fender. Hyperspace. Now I'm just touching up the Thompson's water seal behind where that wheel well was. And that's a good thing because I wanted to do that anyways. I didn't like uh, the feeling it gave me leaving that unfinished behind there. Well, I'm able to tighten that bolt now. There we go. I'm good with that. Okay, now we're on to the other side. And if you watched part two of my trailer series, you may remember that there was a bolt that I put in that was in a really tight spot. Uh, where the wheel well and the frame of the trailer kind of come together and I couldn't get a wrench on it after I drilled the hole and I said that I elected not to put a bolt in the same spot on the other side so it wasn't perfectly symmetrical but now that this wheel well is gone I'm able to get to that bolt and tighten it down really good which is another positive so I think taking these things off is a good idea all around it's, it's all kinds of good things are happening and hopefully I'll be able to haul a full load of wood now and that's really what this whole project is about. Um, I really didn't think that the weight would be that big of a problem in this trailer. I haven't really owned a cargo trailer, utility trailer like this before. But also the, the gentleman that I bought it from told me that I'd have no problems hauling wood, that he hauls wood, that I, there's no way I would overload this trailer with wood. and. Like I said, I was thinking about building the walls up even higher eventually, like later on, and piling more wood into it. I didn't ever think that the suspension would bottom out like this easily, 
But long story short, I think it was pretty much a poor design. I, I was looking at all the other utility trailers around town on my way home and as I drive around and stuff, and the wheel wells or the fender wells over the wheels go way up over the wheels. I mean, there's a good four to six inch gap of clearance between the top of the tire and where the metal mud flap fender well would sit down on top of the tire. So the trailer has plenty of room to settle when you put weight in it and it sinks down. Well, my trailer was designed that there was only like two inches of space. I mean, it was like it was like a low profile tire in a sports car wheel well. It just hugged right over the wheel well. Well, the frame underneath it, the frame and the axle, the gap there is almost six inches. So the frame, or excuse me, the, the floor of the trailer can drop like four to six inches before it bottoms out on the leaf springs and would hit the axle. And even the trailer mechanic I talked to said, that doesn't sound right. You should have more room in between the top of the tire and the fender than you have in between the axle and the bottom of the trailer underneath the trailer because that has to settle, right? I mean, that's the thing that needs to settle more than the, the wheel wells and the tires. So I hope that makes sense to you if you understand what I'm saying. But it was a poor design. There was only like two inches of room before it hit the tire and there's the leaf springs move further than that. So just cut the, cut the fenders off was basically the easiest solution for me right now. I'm gonna see how it works. I mean, I thought about putting some type of rubber block or something in between the bottom of the trailer and the axle to just sit on the blocks and block it from dropping down anymore. Um, but that's not a great long-term solution. I don't know what I would use. I don't want to use wood. Wood will probably eventually break. Uh, it would have to be replaced. It doesn't seem permanent. And I'd have to find like the perfect size hard rubber suspension block. I, I'm just not getting into that yet. I'm going to try to just cut these fenders off and load it as much as I can. And if I can get pretty much a full load of wood in here, um, I'm just going to roll with it. Okay, so this is the after. The stain is a little mismatched. I don't really care. It was it was built up behind that fender where it was touching and it got a little thick right there when it was running down, but I just kind of touched that up a little bit. It's gonna get beat up anyways, probably. I don't know, you can see where I was throwing wood in it today and it's already got some dents in it and stuff. So anyways, it makes it look Good, the outside will look a lot better than just plain plywood and it'll still probably last a little longer. But she's uh, lean and mean and highly customized now. I know the lighting's not good in here. Um, so, no fenders. It was pretty easy to cut off. If anybody's wondering, take the tire off. Don't just start cutting into your fender. That's what I started to do. But if you take the tire off, you can get it on the inside and the welds are on the inside of the wheel well behind the tire and you can just just barely touch them with that grinder and it came right off this side came off real easy these rail these welds were pretty crappy right here I put a little black paint on it and it's not even totally covered there was a little tiny spot weld right here just broke off basically i kicked it i think and it broke and then a little weld right here and then on the back, the same thing, a spot weld in that area and a little weld along the fender here where it attaches. It popped right off, so we'll try it again. Now, there was only like an inch and a half, two inches of space in the wheel well, above the wheel, between the wheel the top of the wheel and the fender, there was like that much room. I could put two fingers in there and just barely kind of move them a little. That's how far the trailer has to go down. And I can fit my whole hand in there. You can't really see. Here's a brick. A brick fits in there. So the leaf springs have 
basically the same, however wide a standard brick is, about four inches, five inches, it's over that. So it's four and a half, five inches of room for the leaf springs to move, but the tires only allowed for like two inches maybe on top of the tire. So the weight just came all down and, and hit the tires on those fenders. So what I'll do is I'll load it next time and just keep getting under here and looking. And I'll go until that frame is about an inch away from the axle. So I have a little bit of cushion when I hit bumps and stuff. So I'm not just riding on my axle and slamming down on it. Um, that's what the mechanic told me. I mean, it may be better to go ahead and let it ride on the axle. So, cause if you had an inch or something and you hit a bump real hard, it's gonna slam together and smack your axle with force. If it was just riding on the axle already, it would be kind of cushion. But he said, give it about an inch or two of clearance. So that's probably what I'll try and just drive slow. When I'm loaded, I'll just drive slow, keep an eye on it. And I don't know, well, I'll give you an update the next time I load it with firewood and we'll see. Go ahead, Maddie, you wanna stick your face in there? <laughs>